is when I'm talking today about sex, santo, so, sex soccer and el santo, the new rules for communicating about the coast and ocean, the, the deal is when I was a kid, that excitement and passion that you caught today when you showed up at the beach and the, and the waves are firing and it's beautiful and you want to take your suit off and jump in the water, um, I got that because I spent my life at the beach. And my parents were European immigrants that essentially um, they came to America, they were war, war refugees, they came to California in the 1960s, they showed up in Malibu and Santa Monica and Venice and LA, and they thought they were living the lives of Hollywood movie stars, right? Because anybody can go to the beach, and the infectious enthusiasm that my parents transmitted to me, that I got when I was hanging out with my little brother with an inner tube and me in the back there and my friends in Central America because my hippie family took us on a trip in 1974 in our van from Imperial Beach, California, all the way down to El Salvador. We stopped at fishing communities in the middle of nowhere, and we saw how people lived, and more importantly, we saw how they lived with the ocean, for the ocean, and understood that their livelihoods were linked to the ocean. And when I do my job as a coastal conservationist, um, ultimately it's my job and all our jobs to transmit the infectious joy and beauty of the coast and ocean. And this is in Baja California, but it could have been Torrey Pines 150 years ago. So that we can solve some of the very complex issues that are facing our coast and ocean, but moreover, our entire planet. And you think that would be easy. Because again, the surf was firing, the dolphins were out, the leopard sharks were in the water, you could swim with the sea turtle, and dude, how is it? Stoked, it's fired up, it's awesome. So what is important about that? It's important because they're inviting us to participate. They're empowering you to, to enjoy that joy, right? It's such a critical element. Of course, if it all works right. But why is it that government agencies and corporations, and more importantly, my colleagues in the environmental field, conservation biologists with PhDs, have such a hard time encapsulating that joy, that spirit of participation and empowerment that we all feel every time we go to the beach? Now, I was just at this beach with my kids. The water was polluted where I live in Imperial Beach uh, for 10 days during spring break. So every morning before work, I'd, or actually, yeah, I load up the kids in my Toyota Camry, four Groms, right, four 13-year-olds 13 13 and one 15-year-old, and we take them to the beach, La Jolla Shores. Dolphins, the most exciting thing was they, 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 they surfed with a dolphin. And they shared the joy with each other, they chattered, they laughed, two hours. And then after an hour at a time, they'd still be talking about it. And so the key is, we have to figure out how to encapsulate that happiness, that sense of community, every time we communicate about the value of the coast and ocean. Because the old rules don't work. Now, this is the Amazon River, the Tijuana River on the US-Mexico border. When it rains, we get 100 million gallons of sewage polluted water in the ocean. Um, it creates a 40 square mile sewage plume, all right? The beaches are really polluted. It's a bummer. But if you talk to government officials who are charged with closing the beach and informing a 13-year-old kid who just rode his bike down to the beach to go surfing because he's off school and he has nothing else to do, and at the skate park, kids are smoking pot and he doesn't want to hang around them. Well, he gets down to the beach and he says, what's going on with the water? And he said, well, there's been an exceedance. All right, what the hell is an exceedance? The water's polluted, it's dirty. Hey, kid, let's figure out how to get you somewhere else. Now, this is a trial of uh, trash. Now, Larry's here. Larry, these are kids from High Tech High, okay? These kids saw this trash and they said, we need to figure out how to deal with it. All right, it's a pile of But, and by the way, they did deal with it. Um, when they talk to government officials, and the same thing, I'll be in the room and they're saying, TMDL, TMDL, TMDL. I'm like, is that the same pile of trash we were talking about? Total maximum daily load, all right? It's a nightmare. I, I have a PhD and I can't understand my colleagues when they talk about the problems, more importantly, the solutions that we need to clean up that coast so that kid who, when he rides his bike to the beach, doesn't face pollution and moreover can swim and surf with dolphins. And, and that's really the issue known as listening because ultimately our message, whether or not we're in the public health field or uh, the environmental field or any field in which we're trying to serve the public good, really at the end of the day, our audience are 10 year olds. They're not 35 year olds with PhDs. They're not scientists at Scripps Institution of Oceanography. They are these kids, these kids in Mexico whose parents are fishermen, who live a life of utter simplicity, but are absolutely connected to the joy of the ocean every day of their lives, just like those 10 and 13 year olds are here in San Diego. 
Um, and that's because we use jargon, we use data, and we use science, which at the end of the day just don't work. And that's because this again is our audience. This family of beach lovers who surf, they skate, they love dolphins. They're not necessarily environmentalists. They're not anything. They're just a happy family that loves the ocean. They want to be, when you talk to them about a solution or a problem, they want to be inspired. They want to feel empowered. They want us to connect to them. The problem is we're always talking down to people. We're always giving them a brochure. And I figured that out. I was out on the beach in Imperial Beach, my hometown, where I still work to deal with these issues of water pollution and all kinds of other stuff. And that complicated brochure, I'm down at the end of the street, and I'm handing it to a bunch of guys, you know, a bunch of 40-year-old guys standing around, you know, wearing their dirty T-shirts and haven't shaved or wanted to go surfing. It's like, dude, hey, have you heard about this problem? And they're looking at it and reading it, and they're going, what, what does it say? And so you really have to figure out the ways in which we can connect and communicate with people that make sense, in which values come first, values come first, the foundation of our life comes first, and the facts come second. And so what are the new rules? Well, the new rules are really the old rules if you're doing things that make sense, that connect with people through their heart, through their passion, through the ways that they understand through family and community, trust, right, and empowerment, right? Do things and communicate in a way that brings people to take ownership of the issue that you're trying to address. Now, obviously, the first, the first rule is to always sex it up. And you wouldn't think that would be obvious when you're trying to deal with the issue of saving sea turtles. But what we found out when we were trying to save sea turtles all over Latin America and in Miami, uh, here in San Diego, is that there's a problem with sea turtles. They lay eggs. And among a wide group of men throughout Latin America, and including in Miami, um, a lot of men believe that turtle eggs are a form of organic Viagra. So you walk into a bar, you pay a buck, you drink your beer, and then you, you, you down a sea turtle egg. That practice of organic Viagra, trying to get an erection by eating a sea turtle egg to please your woman, really was causing the extinction of about five species of sea turtles, literally gone from the face of the earth. And so what I was doing, what we were doing, is trying to rack our brain about how to deal with this issue <laughs> in a funny way. Now, I was, in, I was in TJ, right? I'm in TJ across the border, and I see a sexy ad billboard, right, for, for condoms. And the, sex, is, the sexy ad has a sexy woman in a bikini, and it says something like, my man, I confide in my man because he uses, I think the brand is Confia condoms, right? And I thought, bing, perfect. Let's flip that around and use it for sea turtles. My man doesn't need to eat sea turtle eggs because he knows it won't make him more potent. Right? Now, the thing about why this campaign worked, why the New York Times picked it up, but why it went viral and really global through all the areas where people eat sea turtle eggs, because it was funny. Right? It wasn't really sexy. It was really funny because it was talking about sex openly. The dirty little secret that everybody talks about right, was out of the open. More importantly, it wasn't addressed to men, it was addressed to their wives, right? And upholding the, or outing the secret that in Mexico everybody laughed about, which is macho in the street, macho in la calle, mandilon in la casa, apron wearer in the house. We know who holds the rules, who holds the key to the household happiness. It's the wives. This campaign was aimed at women. More importantly, the spokespeople for this campaign became women. Every anchor on the Univision and uh, Telemundo and TV Azteca and, and Televisa networks in Latin America and the United States loved this campaign. They riffed on this campaign because it was, it was fun. Doris Mar, the, the uh, Argentine uh, model who's now, a, we made her career as a, a soap opera star in Mexico, who was a Playboy cover girl, had fun with this campaign. She went on with the anchors, talked about it. Uh, more importantly, we made it cool. We worked with Mana, the world's most famous or popular Spanish language rock band. Um, they riffed on that campaign. They did a PSA for the campaign. They made the campaign cool. But really, we maxed out our street cut because this campaign wasn't about us. It wasn't about biologists. It wasn't really about sea turtles. It was really about getting people to take action to defend something, these sea turtles that were really Mexican or uh, Costa Rican by birth, right, that people have ownership of, that people were trying to defend. And more importantly, 
the campaign went viral. We sent it down by, from TJ. We would go down to the TJ bus station and send posters to remote little villages in southern Mexico where people would take the campaign. They had stickers. They had T-shirts. They took ownership of the campaign. We no longer owned it. And even mariachis in Mexico City, where we, we launched the campaign, loved the campaign as well. Now, the second thing is, is soccer is a core value. And really, everything is counterintuitive, because ultimately, at the end of the day, soccer is not a value, except in Latin America and the rest of the world, where it is. It means unity, it means family, it means community. And in this campaign, uh, to create, help create marine protected areas in Mexico, and even in California, to try to engage Latino audiences in efforts to get them involved in coastal conservation efforts, we created a soccer team. You are the, the defense, you are the defender of the sea. Join the team, join the team. Be part of this team, because the ocean is for everyone and belongs to everyone. And the campaign was successful. We engaged thousands of people, even Indians in the, in the state of Guerrero, uh, loved the campaign because Jorge Campos, one of the world's great soccer stars, was um, a part of the campaign. But again, we did it in a non-traditional way by inviting people to participate, right? And by the way, we went to the World Cup where we reached an audience, a global audience, with this message of 300 million people. It went on, the message went on sports networks. It was very popular because it touched a core value in which we invited people to participate. But the other thing that we have to realize is that at the end of the day, it's not about what we think is important or we think is funny. Because using the wrestling superstar, El Hijo del Santo, the son of the saint, should be a joke, right? It should be a joke to have the santo be your spokesperson to ask people to save the ocean. But in Mexico and Latino communities, El Santo is not a joke. He's a very serious person. He's the, El Hijo del Santo, the son of the saint, is the son of Mexico's John Wayne, El Santo. In fact, when I was a kid, I watched a Santo movie, and a Santo was, was, um, was fighting the witches. But the Santo was always good. Everybody knew that the Santo stood for social justice and defending the rights of everyday people. And so when we engage El Santo, and this is a few weeks ago in Mexico's Congress, people take him very seriously. They actually listen to the message because Santo leads with his values. He represents all that is good about Latino and Mexican society. And when we were, uh, again, this last year, when we were helping uh, to promote a system of marine protectors in California, literally hundreds of kids would congregate El around El Santo every time we engaged them in a public event. I'm going to go on the radio and TV. But finally, you know, um, one of the things that we have to learn to do is let go. We have to learn how to punk it up, to be a little off kilter, a little on the edge. Because at the end of the day, that's what's going to work to engage people who normally aren't engaged in anything. And in this effort to help clean up our beaches in South County uh, on the U.S.-Mexico border, what I realized was, was that every time I talked to somebody who was involved in this, in this issue and proposing solutions, I had no idea what they were talking about. It was tertiary, secondary, MGD, TMDL, and I was like, dude, what in the hell are you talking about? More importantly, how are we supposed to engage a bunch of 13-year-old skate punk surfers, right, in this effort and get them to write letters and engage their families to, to deal with this issue if I can't understand what you're talking about? And a lot of people resisted, but it didn't matter because what we said was clean water now. It became an action. The kid, right, the skate, skateboard surf kid, right, with a spray paint, Spray painting it became a symbol. It wasn't even the language, it was a symbol, right? Take action, join this campaign, do something. And so every time I'd show up at the beach, not with a Wall Street Journal article about what was going on, it, was, it would be, dude, here's a stencil, here's a sticker, here's a t-shirt, right? Good, I'll put it on my board. What do you need us to do, right? And pretty soon we had an army of kids, we had US Navy SEALs, we had the Border Patrol, I was on TV with a cowboy talking about clean water because everybody got it. Clean water now. Agua limpia ya. In three days on Friday, we're going to inaugurate a $100 million sewage treatment plant that all those kids and all those people wrote letters to Senator Dianne Feinstein, who's on the Appropriations Committee, to take action and do something. All right. It worked. All right. It wasn't fancy. It wasn't scientific. We needed the scientists, we needed the bureaucrats, if we needed the, if the people who were the experts, we engaged them. Values first, facts second. Now, 
uh, I love the Surfrider Foundation because they're geniuses. And actually, I ripped off that campaign from the Surfrider Foundation. And they, they said, great. They're very much into giving out tools for everyone. And in the effort to save Trestles, a, one of the world's best uh, surf spots, a famous uh, state park in Southern California, San Onofre Beach State Park, that was threatened by uh, a toll road, a private toll road that was going to be plowed right through the middle of it. The Surfrider Foundation created this genius campaign based on the Sex Pistols, Van Halen, uh, ACDC. They even used Ronald Reagan, who created the park, as a symbol for the park. So all these cool punk rock skate surf kids, including my kids, would have t-shirts on that said Save Trestles with a big picture of Ronald Reagan, with a quote from Ronald Reagan about how he created the park, right? Genius. But the most important part of that it was designed to do something, to get people to come to a meeting, the California Coastal Commission meeting two years ago, three years ago, in which we had 3,000 people there because they owned the campaign. These kids probably had never been involved in anything like that in their lives. They lived and breathed this campaign. If you were cool in Southern California, you were at that Coastal Commission meeting. All right. My kids still wear the T-shirts. They, they wave signs that confronted uh, union guys that were brought in to, to to, to, uh, to defend the, the, this toll road idea. It was one of the most brilliant and moving transformative events I've ever seen. I've ever seen because the people who were there to defend this state park, to defend their way of life, to defend their livelihoods, and really the very being of why we're here in Southern California. You're right to, to have that beautiful view of dolphins and surfers and beautiful waves and have contact with leopard sharks and sea turtles was encapsulated in this movement and it made us feel good, and it made us want to take more action. Um, so finally, you know, it's a new world. At the end of the day, it's not our job, those of us who are in public service, to tell people what to do. It's our job to go out into the field, to go to the mariachi festivals, the motocross races, hang out at the U.S.-Mexico border. If you want to see how people communicate and what's going on, the trends that are happening, just stand outside the, the entrance, uh, the exit from, from Tijuana into San Isidro, and you see everything right at your fingertips, all right? Go, go to the Mission Beach Boardwalk, all right? Go to Lucha Libre events, amazingly uh, cool, cool stuff. Figure out how people are communicating and use that energy and enthusiasm and commitment to community and family to really infuse the messages and the campaigns that we have to do good and make sure that this kid right here, this baby, and his children and his grandchildren and his grandchildren and grandchildren will always have the opportunity to make the world a better place and get to, to go out one day right here and see whales and dolphins and sea turtles. Thank you very much.